Ladies and gentlemen, fine people of computer-assisted reporting, who among you feels fluent and competent in the equations of mathematical statistics? Show of hands. I'm surprised we got that many. Well, I'm here to tell you there's a better way. There's a better way with a newfangled device I like to call the computer. Resampling, that's right. Reduce, reuse, resample. Solve every problem with this one weird trick. How does this work? Let's take confidence intervals. Basic problem. Let's say we want to find the average height of journalists. You know, all know how to do this. We take a sample, we take the average of that sample. Now, what is the margin of error? You've all seen this formula. Should we use this formula? Who in the audience is prepared to explain this formula to us tonight? Who can derive it with confidence? You, sir? Didn't think so, me neither. No! Let's not do it this way. All right, let's think about this. What we really want is what we could get if we could repeat that survey thousands of times. You repeat the survey a thousand times, we take the average of each, we plot a histogram, the 95% confidence interval is the central 95% of that histogram, by definition. Well, we don't have a thousand surveys, but we can make new samples from our existing samples. We take each one of those values, we uh, sample uh, the same number of points with repetition, which gives us a distribution, we take the average of each. The new histogram is just the same as the old histogram, and you can prove this. In fact, this is better than the formulas. All of the formulas are derived assuming that your data is normal. Well, I'm here to tell you, resampling works if your data is normal, abnormal, skewed, bimodal, black, white, up, down, in, out, or sideways. It will give you the right answer. But there's more. Significance testing. Let's say you've got test scores data from two different classes. You want to know, is this new teaching method better? Sure, it looks like class A is doing a little better, the average is higher, but could this just be chance? No, let's not do this. This is a piece of the uh, two-sided t-test for two samples of different size and different variants. Who wants to apply this today? Not me. We have a computer. So, let's work this out. Reasons that a student's performance could be different boils down to because of the class they're in, like their teacher, not because of the class they're in, but like their parents. Let's eliminate the first factor and see what happens. How do we do this? That's right, resample. What we do is we take the class assignments, we scramble them, we permute them, we, we break the relationship between students and class. So, there's our original data on the left. We generate lots and lots of new classes on the right. Each of them has a difference between the average class scores. We plot a histogram of that. This is what we get. There's the possible uh, variations, um, and there's the data we saw. Now, I know what you're thinking. Do I run the story? What does this mean? Well, here's the thing. We count up all of the samples that are higher than the data we observed. That is, by definition, the p-value. The exact p-value without one formula. In fact, Fisher, the great Fisher, knew this. And the only reason he never did permutation tests is because he never lived to see the computing machine. There's more. Is there anything that resampling cannot do? Scramble your sample. Put your data in the grader. In this case, the Wall Street Journal wanted to know, was there insider trading by executives? Now, I don't know anything about inside information, but I do know something about luck. So here's what we do. We take all of the trades they did over the last year. We randomly scramble them through time. We ask who got lucky, and not just lucky, astronomically lucky. A few trillion resamples, and the answer pops right out. For the finality. Now, every educated person knows that two colliding black holes will emit a powerful pulse of gravity waves as they spiral inward towards each other to a catastrophic end. But we only observed this first last September. How did we do it? A continent-sized instrument which measures vibrations smaller than a proton. Uh, when we see the same signal at two detectors a thousand miles apart, gravity wave. But could this just be noise? Could this just be uh, passing trucks or rats gnawing on the wires? No! How do we know this? Resampling. We take uh, data from each detector, a random piece from random times, we align them, we ask, does this look like a gravity wave? This gives us a probability of seeing a signal just by chance. And so there it is, my friends. That curve is the uh, probability of seeing a signal at least that large just by chance, which we got, which we calculated out of a single formula by resampling. That dot up in the corner is massive black holes colliding. I ask you, <laughs> is there anything resampling cannot do? Reduce your frustration, reuse your data, resample your way to glory and story. Thank you very much, and good luck.